Hey guys, we're gonna do another chapter three video, um, 3.2, and we're gonna talk about is it a function? And Monster's here today, so I've got my helper making videos. Um, we are going to be working on just, is it a function, yes or no, and kind of getting into the details of how to describe graphs and tables and equations. So here's how we're gonna get things started. We're gonna do an example in our notebook. And for this example, we're gonna sketch a graph. So you're gonna need a ruler and you're gonna to need to set up a nice, neat X, Y axis. And if I go fast through this, just pause the video and, and set your graph up so it looks nice. Cause you do not wanna make your graphs look uh, messy and you, you want nice graphs. So set up your scale numbers, set up your X, Y axis. And then here's what we're gonna do with this graph. We're gonna plot four different points. Each of them lands on an axis at the number three. So we have a point at 3, 0, 0, 3, negative 3, 0, and 0, negative 3. And I'm going to connect those points with a circular graph that looks like this. And our job is we're going to analyze this graph. We're going to take a good look at it and decide, is it a function? So that's going to be our first question. Is this a function? It's definitely a graph, but is it a function? So this Figure out the answer to that question. We know with graphs, we use our vertical line test. And if our vertical line hits our graph more than one time, like this one does, then you know the answer to our question is no, it's not a function. And it's not a function because it fails that vertical line test. So a vertical line test is a great way to decide if a graph is a function or if it's not a function. Here's the second question we're gonna ask. Is it linear? Is this a linear graph? Well, linear means line. And this is definitely not a line, it's a circle. So if it's in the shape of a circle, we know the answer already is no. What is it, buddy? Come here. So the answer is no. And the reason is pretty much just like I said, it's not a straight line. That's what you're going to say. Is, oh, not a straight line, not linear. Okay, next question. Is it a continuous graph? Hmm, well, continuous means when you draw it, that when you're drawing, you don't have to lift your pencil at all. So it means no lifting of your pencil. Well, to draw that circle, you would never need to lift your pencil. You totally wouldn't need to do that. So the answer is yes, it's definitely continuous. You can sketch the graph without lifting your pencil. All of the points in this graph are connected. It's definitely continuous. Okay, so we've asked three questions. Is it a function? We said no. Is it linear? No. Is it continuous? Yes. Now there's one more thing we can do with this graph. We can describe it using domain and range. So under the graph, I'm gonna write domain and range. And a little reminder, domain is referring to all of the X values and range is referring to all of the Y values. So we're gonna look first at the X values. We're gonna do domain first. So we look at that X axis, which is right there. And when we look at the X axis, we look at where is our graph. And our graph is really here. It's right between negative three and positive three, all, all in between there. So our domain gets sandwiched between that negative three, positive three. So we say negative three to three, and we put x in the middle. x is greater than or equal to negative three, and it's less than or equal to positive three. Now let's look at the range. The range is that y-axis, so we're looking at this thing. And for this graph, it's pretty similar to our domain. If you look, it goes from negative three to positive three, just on the y-axis instead of the x-axis. So I'm gonna write my range the same way, negative three to positive three, but I'll use y instead of x since it's range. And that's it. There are all of our descriptors of this graph. Okay, so um, kind of big idea for your notes here. I'm going to make a cloud. And inside this cloud, what we're studying in this chapter is we're studying relations, where we're relating two variables, x and y. And there's all sorts of ways we can look at these relations. We can look and see, is it a function or not a function? We can look and see, What's the domain and what's the range? We can decide if it's linear or nonlinear, and we can also decide if it's continuous or discrete. We have all these different ways, monster. We have all these different ways of basically analyzing these uh, graphs and, and deciding what type are they. And on top of that, they're not just graphs. And all the relations that we're looking at can be represented lots of different ways. They could be a graph, but they could also be a table, it could be in an equation, it could be a pattern, it could be a story problem, some sort of real life connection. So any of these different ways we can analyze as a relation of, oh, we've got two variables, they're in this table, or we've got two variables, they're on this graph, or we've got two variables in this equation, 
and we can ask ourselves these questions. Is it a function or is it not? Is it linear or is it nonlinear? Is it continuous? Is it discrete? What's the domain and range? Those are all things we can ask about any relation. So let's look at another one. Let's do an example too. Um, and like I said, let's, let's look at a different avenue. So let's go for a table. Let's make a table in our notes. And in this table, I'm going to have an in and an out. Input, output. We call those our x and our y. Those are our two variables we're going to relate. And I'm going to fill this table up with some numbers. I'm going to do 0, 1, 2, 3. And below it, for 0, I'm going to do 8. And then I'm going to do 11, 14, and 17. And I left one blank spot at the end of my table. And I did that on purpose because let's say I accidentally repeated a number and I did 1 again. I would expect my answer would still be 11. That's what I would expect. And that's going to be helpful information because I have some questions now. Is this table a function? Well, we don't do the vertical line test because it's not a graph. But when we look at our input outputs, x equals 1, both times 11 was the output. So yes, this is a function. Every input has one output. That's perfect. So every input has one output in the table. All right, is it linear? Well, I can't see it because I haven't graphed it. But what I can tell is I can look at the bottom of this table and recognize that the growth of this pattern, what's it going up by every time? It's going up by threes, plus three, eight plus three is 11, 11 plus three is 14, 14 plus three is 17. So the answer is yes, it's totally linear because we have this constant growth, plus three, plus three, plus three. And so I'm gonna write that, the growth is constant. Okay, so yep, it's a function. Yes, it's linear. One more question. Is it continuous or discrete? Well, this is a little bit of a trick question because you don't actually know. You can't see the graph and you don't know enough information about what these points mean. So you don't really know if they're connected or not connected. So I would say for this one, we're not totally sure. I, I think we're lacking some information. So without more information, it is unknown whether the points are connected on the graph or not. We just need more information. I don't think we can answer this one. But I do want to do one more thing before we move on from this problem. If it's linear, I think we should write an equation. So linear means we can write y equals mx plus b. And that's exactly what we're going to do. y equals mx plus b. But that m stands for the growth number. And what is our pattern growing by? It's growing by plus 3. So we're going to change that m to a 3 our growth number. And then we're going to look at that plus b. Well, that is our figure 0. And in this case, figure 0 is 8. That's the output. So we're going to change that plus b to a plus 8. And then there's our equation, y equals 3x plus 8. Sweet. All right. So one more problem here, example 3. This time, we are going to plot a series of points onto a graph. We're going to set up a nice xy axis. We're going to label it and plot these points. So I want you to pause your device right now and I want you to set up your graph and plot all of your points so that we can see if you're doing it correctly. So go ahead and try. All right, my little dog here wants to say hi in this video again. Um, so let's check your points. Let's see how you guys are doing here. So negative three, three, that would be right there. Negative three, three. Negative one, five, that would be right there at five, up at five. Two, four would be over here. Uh, negative one, one would be back here. And then five, negative four would be way over here. So here's our points, here's our graph. Hopefully this is what your graph looks like too. Now let's ask the questions. Function, is it a function? Vertical line test, well let's see. If I draw a vertical line right there, it looks like it hits in two spots. This one fails, this is not a function. So the answer is no. It fails the vertical line test. Second question, is it linear? Well, do the points look like a straight line? Like, can you put your ruler through all of them at the same time? No, you can't. So definitely no, not linear. We're going to say it is not a straight line. Okay, next question, is it continuous? Well, based on what we're seeing, I'm thinking, no, it's kind of sporadic points everywhere. It's disconnected. So no, we're going to say it's a discrete graph. It's discrete and the points are not connected. So no, not a function, no, not linear, no, it's not continuous, it's actually discrete. But we have one more thing we can do. We can list out what the domain and range is. 
So we're going to do that next. Domain is going to be the X values and range is going to be our Y values. So look at all these points. If we're going to do domain first and we're going to do all those X values, each point, we're going to look at where it lands on the X axis. So that first point, did you see that? That first point is at negative three on the X axis. That top high point, that's at negative one on the X axis. So is this point right here, it's at negative one also. Um, and then the next point looks like it's at two on the X axis. And the last point is out at five. So really our domain is a list of those values, negative three, negative one, two, and five. That's gonna be our domain. And we just list those out. Range is gonna be a similar story. So for the range, come on sir, for the range, we're gonna look at the points, but this time we're gonna slide over to the Y axis. So this one's at three. Uh, this one's at one. This point's up here at five, or is that six? Yeah, it's way up there at five. And then this point's at four. And then the bottom point's way down at negative four. So you can look through the Y axis and you can see like, okay, negative four, one, three, four, and five are our points. So we're gonna put those there. Okay, so now it's your turn. Time for a U-try problem. For your U-try, what you're going to do is you're going to analyze this graph. Here's your graph. You're going to answer, is it a function, yes or no? Is it linear? And is it continuous? Pause the video and see if you can do this correctly. Okay, you ready to check? Is it a function? Well, yeah, it passes the vertical line test, so definitely a function. Is it linear? Well, it does look like it's made of straight lines but not just one line. It looks like a couple of lines, three lines actually. So my answer is actually no, because it's not a singular line, it's kind of multiple lines. Um, so this is not a straight line. And then is it continuous? I'm gonna say yes, you never have to lift your pencil to draw this graph. So you can draw the function without lifting your pencil, the points are connected. Definitely yes on the continuous. How did you do? Did you get the same answer as me? Did you write out a sentence for each one to kind of explain it? Make sure you include your sentence. It's good practice. So um, guys, this is going to wrap up our video, but just here's the really big idea that we're kind of going after here is we've got these relations and we want to look at them through lots of different ways, graphs, tables, patterns, stories, equations, but we want to be able to answer questions about them. Like, is it a function or is it not? Is it linear or is it not? Is it continuous or is it discrete? What's the domain? What's the range? We want to be able to answer all those details and really give it some descriptors. So um, keep watching more videos and I will see you guys in class. Bye.